Okay, one more connection that we want to make about elasticity and revenue. And I know you guys are getting kind of um, a little bit, I mean, there's a lot of derivation in, in some of these videos and a lot of more theory. Um, and in some of that, I know you're getting a little bit tired of, but there's also this idea that these formulas that you're using in business are coming from somewhere. They originate from some underlying theory and um, just to hopefully have an appreciation for that. So the last thing that we ta want to talk about is how elasticity of demand is related to revenue. Okay, and what it kind of tells us about revenue. Okay, so when I think of revenue, R of X, it's this quantity sold or demanded times the price, right? Which in the word in the variables that we've been using, Q times P. Okay? But we know that this Q is really a function of P, right? That demand is a function of price. Okay. So when I go to, and I want to take the derivative of this revenue to see how it's changing relative to price. So when I take that derivative, R of, oh, this should be P. Sorry. Look right up here. This one right here should be P. Okay. Okay, so when I change, take the derivative, r prime of p, take the derivative with respect to p, I have q of p and p. I'm going to use the product rule here, right? So over here, my f is q of p. The derivative of f is q prime of p, right? And g is just p, and the derivative of g is 1. So, and this is f g prime plus g f prime. Okay, so let me go ahead and do that. F is Q of P times G prime 1 plus G P times Q prime of P. Okay, so this is, I have Q of P plus P times Q prime of P. Okay. Okay. So I want to try and get this point elasticity in here somewhere. So, and I know, and just maybe as a side, I'll do this over here. I know that the elasticity is negative P over Q DQ DP. Because I want to try and define some relationship between is revenue increasing? Um, and have this idea with an increase in price because if demand doesn't go down that much maybe maybe I will get an increase in revenue when I when I increase price okay so I'll solve this for P okay so when I do that I get the elasticity here and maybe I'll rewrite this as negative P over Q. And this is really Q prime, right? So I'll multiply both sides by Q. I get EQ equals negative PQ prime. And divide both sides by negative Q prime. So I get negative Q prime is equal to P. Okay, now I want to stick that in right over here in this revenue function. So Q, and I'll maybe drop these Q of P's for right now just to make it a little bit not as gross. This is my EQ over Q prime, and that's a negative, right? So let me make sure that's readable right there. And then this is still my Q prime from before, okay? Now, do you see these Q primes will cancel? This one in the denominator and this one in the numerator, right there. I know it's snazzy. So when those cancel right here, Q prime and Q prime, I'm left with Q um, minus epsilon times Q. 
right? And if I factor out a Q, I get Q times 1 minus this point elasticity. And that is the derivative of revenue. Okay? Now, I want to make again some notes. This is the quantity demanded, right? This is always a positive number, or at least non-negative, right? So that means if the, and do you remember, and I just want to remind you, like, R will be increasing if this whole thing's positive. R will be decreasing if the whole thing's negative, right? So here's the question. I want to go down here, and uh, let me write this, and then we'll make some observations. R prime of P, Q times 1 minus this point elasticity. Okay, and now I want to think about this this what's going on okay so I know that Q is positive so here's a question when is R prime of P decreasing right when is it less than zero when is it negative when is revenue decreasing Okay, all these are words asking the same question, right? Okay, and that's true when this quantity, R prime of P, so when this is less than zero, okay? So, but I know that this one is positive. And I want to get a positive times some number. And I want it to be less than zero, negative. So I know that 1 minus epsilon has to be negative in order for this to happen, right? When for r prime to be negative, OK? So r 1 minus epsilon less than zero, right? That's another way to say that. And when I solve that, I get one is less than epsilon, or epsilon is bigger than one. This is the case. This epsilon bigger than one is where we say we have elastic demand. The demand is so, the demand um, reacts so strongly to an increase in price that revenue will actually decrease. Does that make sense? So demand so strongly to a price increase that revenue actually decreases. when epsilon is greater than 1. Okay? Okay. Same sort of um, question. And maybe I'll go down here. So when is R prime of P greater than 0? When is R prime positive, right? And this is a question about where's R increasing. Okay, all of those the same place. Okay, the same re reverbalizing the same question. Okay, and again I look at this R prime of P equals Q times one minus epsilon. And again I remember that this is positive. And if I'm multiplying by another number and I want it to be a positive number, I know that a positive times a positive is a positive, right? So I want 1 minus epsilon to be positive greater than 0. And when I do that, 1 is greater than epsilon or epsilon is less than 1. Okay? Okay. But, uh, and I have in, in these cases that zero, uh, epsilon can't be less than zero, right? It's a positive number. 
um, because Q and P are both positive in this demand, um, the DQ, DP is a negative value. So, so I have something like zero is less than, epsilon is less than one for this case. And this is called inelastic demand. That means even if I increase price, I, I actually see a bump in revenue, right? My price increase doesn't affect demand. enough to cause a decrease in revenue. And in fact, what I'm seeing here is when I increase price, price increase indicates an increase in revenue. Okay. Okay, so we did R prime is less than zero, R prime is greater than zero. There's one more case, right? What happens when I actually get R prime equal to zero? Okay. And again, I want to look at this R prime of P equals Q times one minus epsilon. If I know that this is a positive quantity, I have actual demand, then in order for this to happen, one minus this point elasticity has to be zero and elasticity is one. We call this demand unit elastic demand. And it means that revenue is not affected. By a change in price. Okay, now all, like this is point elasticity. When you calculate this number, it doesn't tell you the elasticity across the entire function. It's telling you elasticity at a point. So once you do that, I mean, you really are kind of limiting yourself to looking locally at the, at that, that particular region. Okay, so let's go through and just answer some questions about this particular um, problem. A company estimates that weekly sales Q of its product is related to the product's price by this function. Uh, currently, each unit is selling for $32, and the function is 22,160 divided by the fifth root of P cubed. Okay, so I have part A, determine the point elasticity demand of this product. So again, I have these three quantities, negative P over Q, DQ, DP, that I have to find. So let's find um, 1, P is 32, 2, Q at 32. And can you guys plug in? And I'll plug in as well. 2160 divided by and I get 270. Is that what you guys get? And then 3, um, Q is 2160 P to the minus 3 fifths. And then I want to take the derivative. Negative 3 fifths times P to the minus and negative 3 fifths minus 1 is minus, I think, 8 fifths. Is that what you guys get? So, and then I plug in dq, dp, oops, that's a q up top, at 32 is 60, and I'm going to plug that into my calculator, 2160 times negative three-fifths. And I get that that is 
negative 5.0625, okay? So now coming down, point elasticity, the actual elasticity, negative. And I get negative 32 over 270 times negative 5.0625. And I get, that's 0.6. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. State whether the demand is elastic, inelastic, or unit elastic. So we saw this is 0.6. And we saw, remember, these are, so let me just rewrite. For elastic demand, epsilon is bigger than 1. Inelastic, zero is less than, it's between zero and one, and unit elastic. So here I have a, this point six is what I'm looking at. It falls right here in this quantity. So this is for part B, I have inelastic demand. for this particular function, okay? Okay, let me go back up, I need to read part C. Interpret the meaning of this number in terms of the company's revenue. Okay, this is the part that we developed today, revenue. What will I expect the revenue to do if I were to raise the price by this 1%? right? And we saw for inelastic demand, R prime of P, right, is Q times 1 minus epsilon. And whatever is happening, this is Q times this 1 minus 0.6, right? So this number is positive, and this number is a positive 0.4, and this should be a positive number overall for R prime. So for inelastic demand, I expect revenue to increase with an increase in price. Because our prime is positive. Okay? Okay, so that's elasticity and revenue. So please let me know if you have questions.